Hello my dear kiddos, warm welcome to this session. So today we are going to discuss a very interesting phylum which is phylum Ask Helminthus. Alright, so now what is exactly Ask Helminthus? Children, Helminthus means worms which you already know. Already we learned platy Helminthus. I told you Helminthus means worms and platy means flat. So the previous phylum all were flat worms, right? Here this Ask helminthus. So this ask is round worms. Round worms. Okay. So which are circular in cross section. If you make a cross cut of the, uh, their body, they are going to be circular. So circular in cross section. Very important. Okay. All right. So, what are the other possible names of the phylum? Children, whenever you learn any, any phylum, please know the other names, okay? Which is very, very important. So, what are the other ways uh, by which we can call this phylum? One is Askhelminthus, as I told you. Uh, it can also be referred as Nemethelminthus. Nemethelminthus. And the most important name is, it is Nematoda. Nematoda. Okay. So these are the different names which you can give to ask Helminthus. Okay. Now we will go as per our way of studying which is general characteristics first followed by the typical characters. So talking about the general characters. What are the things we talk about? First we will talk about habit and habitat. Right. So, talking about uh, their habit and habitat, first of all, they are both aquatic and terrestrial. Okay. And they are free living as well as parasites and parasitic. So, you can find them as parasites both in animals and in plants. Okay, so keep that in your mind. So the next thing which I tell is body organization, then body symmetry, then body coelom. These three things we will see. So body organization, yes, organ system, just like platyhel meant this. Organ system. Body symmetry, for the very first time, pseudo coelomate, pseudo -coelomate. Pseudo means what? False. False coelom they have. So the very first introductory session I have taught you what is meant by pseudo coelom in detail. Okay, you can watch that. And body, uh, sorry, body symmetry that was. So let us change it. So body coelom and now body symmetry. Body symmetry of course they are bilaterally symmetrical. Okay. And then germ... Talking about the germ layer and the body plan, of course, they have three layers. So, they are triploblastic in nature. And children, for the very, very first time, the body plan, if you see, is tube within tube. Okay. Tube within tube. So, when we talk about tube within tube, it comes under complete digestion, right? So, you have to keep that in mind as well. And apart from that, under tube within tube, whether they are protostomates or deuterostomates, that also you have to talk about. So, here they are protostomates, which means the mouth arises first, followed by the anus. Okay. So, tube within tube uh, body plan and they are protostomates. Then, what is the last point regarding the general characters? Segmentation. Are there any segmentation for this nematodes? No. Segmentation is absent. Simple. See? So, we have covered all the points. The general characteristics are done. Good. So, let us move on to the typical characters now. Okay. So, talking about the typical characters children, 
usually the very first point uh, we talk about how do how they appear right so here the very first point regarding the body will be they are round right round worms correct and they have tapering ends ends will be tapered okay simple simple features then as usual digestion then what respiration circulation excretion first we'll talk about this so talking about digestion children uh, they undergo extracellular digestion and here it is complete digestion yeah they are tube within tube protostomates right and talking about respiration and circulation gbs general body surface and regarding circulation of course through diffusion uh, in their general body surface uh, but of course they have the coelomic fluid in their body okay so that point you can add if you want and excretion very very important just like how we talked about flame cells in platyhelminthes here there are specialized cells called rennet cells rennet cells okay so if you look at their excretory part it will be roughly like h shaped part like this okay yeah it will be like this and this pore which you see here is the excretory pore okay so this is the uh, head shaped structure which will ba basically filter the coelomic fluid getting it kiddos So this is regarding the first five points. Moving on to the next points. Which are nervous system, sense organ, reproduction, fertilization and all. We will see one by one. Okay. Sixth point is nervous system. and sense organs talking about the nervous system they have the nerve ring and nerve fibers okay what do they have nerve ring and nerve fibers okay and talking about the sense organs they have something called pharmids and amphids pharmids is nothing but ph sensor okay it senses the ph in the surrounding and amphids they it can sense chemicals chemical sensor okay very important then talking about reproduction very very important remember du here du so remember delhi university so d for dioecious and u for unisexual which means dioecious means two different uh, genders male and female right that is what is unisexual right separate male separate female right yes so which means they show sexual dimorphism that is the male and the female body will be different they show sexual dimorphism 
meaning what differentiation between male and female can be seen in the body and what kind of fertilization they undergo eighth point you can put it as fertilization so they undergo internal fertilization internal fertilization and uh, the next point let me erase this So the next point if you see is regarding development. Development if you see children they can undergo both direct and indirect development. What is the meaning direct development without the involvement of larva. Indirect means larva will exist right. So for direct development I can give you the example is loa loa. Loa loa we call it the eye worm okay which causes loasis. Loasis is nothing but the conjectivities. Conjectivities means what? Inflammation of the conjectiva layer of the eye right and indirect development uh, you can write Ucheria bancrofti. which we call it filarial worm which causes filariasis elephantiasis we say okay here if you see the primary host is going to be human uh, and secondary host is going to be female culex mosquito Okay, female culex mosquito and children what they attack where which which part of the body do they attack. So this is going to be an endoparasite and it will attack the lymphatic system. This filarial worm is going to attack the lymphatic system of the human body. Alright children. Yes, another important thing we are going to see. I am going to do two diagrams. Since I told you there exists sexual dimorphism, right? What is sexual dimorphism? Male, female are going to have different body types now. So if you look at the male, male, female. So male is going to be little shorter with a curved I can say with a small coiled tail like this it's going to be short little shorter with a coiled tail so it is going to have one pore here which is going to be mouth another pore which is excretory pore And then near this tail portion, there is an opening which is called cloaca, right, cloaca and surrounding that, right, these are called the pineal setae. So this pineal setae is going to help in copulation which is sexual intercourse. Okay. Now if you look at the female body now, they are very longer and they have a straight tail unlike the males. They are going to be longer in a straight tail. What they have is just mouth and an excretory pore. There is no cloaca or uh, pineal CT. So what are the points here you can write cloaca present, here absent, here 
pineal setae present. Here absent in females. Here they have coiled tail. Here straight tail. So here they are short in length. Here it is long. Okay, so these are the difference between the male and the female body. So here uh, which worm are we talking about? You can consider this to be Ascaris. Ascaris is basically we call it the intestinal worm. And one more important thing children. I am going to talk about the life cycle of Ascaris that is the intestinal worm. So I am just going to give you a small trick to remember that. Write S L I 1 2 1. So what is this now? I am going to talk about something called molting. Molting means what? Shredding of skin. So basically this Ascaris, no, the human intestinal worm, it will shred away its skin and it grows in size. It becomes an adult. So how many time in its lifetime it is going to uh, uh, shred the skin? 1 plus 2 plus 1 which is 4 moltings in their entire lifetime. The first molting they will do in the soil, suck the second two in the lungs and the last one in the intestine where they become the adult. Okay. Where they become the adult and they can cause a scariasis which is the inflammation of the intestine and all. Okay. So this is regarding the Ascaris part. Finally, what do we always conclude with? The examples, right? So of course you can write Ucheria Bancrofti. Then you can write Loa Loa. Then there is something called and cyclostoma which is we call it the blood worm or hook worm. Then you can write there is something called dracuncules. Then trichinella. So all these are examples of round worms which you can remember. Alright, a little homework to do. Uh, comment on the fertilization aspect and excretion aspect of Ascalminthus in the comment box down below. Right? So, what kind of fertilization they undergo and what kind of excretion, the special cells involved in excretion. That's your little homework to do. So next uh, session we'll catch up with ortho, uh, no, Anilera we'll complete and then followed by Orthropoda. Okay, hope you all enjoyed the session. Do not forget to uh, subscribe the channel and please keep commenting the answers in the uh, comment box and also your doubts. Alright children, bye bye Tara, take care.